Uh, yes, Jill? Yes. Hi, Martin. I'm good. Hi, too. Good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. Yeah, thank you so much. How is America? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. <probably>, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It is what it is. It is what it is right now. It's it's winter yeah. where I am, so it's very cold right now. That that's as much as we'll say about America right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit hot in Uganda. Is it? Yes, it is. Not it's so always, much coldness. I'm in Uganda, East Africa. It's always, it's always hot in Uganda, right? Yeah, always hot. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's always hot. Uh, allow me. Thank you for the great work you're doing. I, I read and you are so much in books, education, uh, alternative health and mental health among uh, some of what you are uh, engaged with. I'm so grateful for that resilience and the support, the energies you are putting in to see to it that you make the world a better place to live in. Thank you so much for that. Um, in Uganda and Africa in general, there are so many mental breakups among the youth, even in, among the married yeah. and, the, and children. And no one is caring to give that second touch as if everyone is on his own and God for us all. And I see you are concentrated in Europe how could you extend your healing and resilience heart to Africa who are far from you? Well, that's, that's a big goal. That's a big goal. Uh, I think what I've been trying to do is to explain to people what MDMA therapy for PTSD is so that People understand it's a real way to heal. Mm. And hopefully with more and more patient voices and more and more clinical trials, mm. uh, Australia has already approved this therapy. The mm. U.S. is looking mm. to approve it in probably August, the FDA. And mm. my hope, my hope is that other countries will see this healing modality mm. and pick it up. But I, I don't have any control over that. I wish I wish I could do more, to be honest. Wow. So in Africa, no African country has taken any step to having that. Okay. So I don't far. know. I, I so far, according to the information I have on LinkedIn and yeah. maps.org, the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies, the yeah. information I have is that Australia already said yes, US is soon mm. to be saying yes, and Canada. But I don't know, those mm. are the countries that stand out to me with my current knowledge set. Wow, so you, you well, don't have... Mm. Okay, so let us pray that the information spreads widely and exactly. we all gonna spot knowledge sharing, we receive approvals and healing extends to all corners of this nation. Yes. Yes, yeah. to all corners of this nation. So how did you start this vision? How did it come into your heart, leaving all other sectors of economies and say, no, I have to put my efforts here? Because the therapy works. Wow. It's just there. I don't know in Uganda, in the United States, there is a huge stigma around psychedelics people automatically assume they are dangerous they are just for recreation or just for partying that's yeah. what i thought when i first was introduced to this therapy i had all of the stereotypes yeah and so when i was lucky enough to have the opportunity put in front of me to heal mm. my childhood abuse with this yeah. therapy mm. i felt a responsibility Mm. to have my voice out there mm. so that other people, mm. so that it, in my small little way, I mm. can be letting people know about the therapy and so that more people can be helped. It would have been a disservice if I had just 
healed mm. and just kept my mouth shut and let other people kind of fight mm. this battle. So, yes, I, I pray and I believe that your dream will 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 materialize. Because I remember President Barack Obama said that America is the land where every dream is possible. Where uh. every dream is possible. I don't know. Uh, presidents normally in developed nations how uh, give a chance to people like you with such healing investments to the nation. How far have you gone? How far have I gone? Yes, with the reaching out to the president of the United States. They are always miles ahead in granting the opportunities and keeping their doors open, not, not like in other nations. Uh, so I don't have that kind of power. <laughs> the president mm -hmm. of the United States is not going to listen to Jill right now. <laughs> oh. um, but But what I can say is that our veterans association, the people mm. who uh, fight in our military, mm. the organization that supports them. So a part mm. of our government mm. has said, actually it was just uh, on the week on the weekend, actually it was just a day or two ago that mm. the veterans association said, we are ready to start looking into more clinical mm. research about mm. MDMA and psilocybin, which are magic mushrooms. Mm. So my my here here's all the you know if mm. if our government is finally starting to realize this is a healing mm. then again other countries can go ahead and take a look at the work at Australia US and Canada mm. and the, the clinical research is out online that's mm. the other thing at mm. maps.org mm. those are the folks who have run the clinical trials and their information is available for anybody around the world. Mm -hmm. So that's another, you know, mm -hmm. people just have to start understanding that this therapy actually exists. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then once they know it actually exists, they're usually they have to decriminalize the actual substance. That's what's going to have to happen in the U.S. So okay. I'm not sure I answered your question as the way you wanted, but that's kind of where we are. Yes, because I'm saying among the sustainable development goals, the healing okay. you are striving to reach out to all nations uh, deals with mental, eh? mental healing, eh? yes. mental yeah. healing. And this is sustainable development goal number three among the 17 sustainable development goals. Have you so far any SDG accelerators on your team? Accelerators? Accelerators, SDG accelerators. I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Catalyst C of the Sustainable Development Goals, the Secretariat of Sustainable Development Goals. Have you any Secretariat in America? Have I, have I what in America? Do you have any secretariat for sustainable development goals? Oh, you're asking how the government is structured? Yeah. For, oh, um, I, I'm, I, I'm absolutely sure our government structures are different between your country and my country. Yes. I, I, I I'm going to, I'm going to say that. So in my country, yeah, we have something called the FDA, FDA, FDA. Federal Drug Administration. Federal, Federal, is... yes, Federal Drug Administration, mm. Federal Drug Administration, and you mm. can just say FDA. Everyone just yeah. says F. Yeah, the Federal Drug Administration. Okay. Yes, they are the ones who right now they have all of the data mm. from all of the clinical trials yeah and they are set to approve this therapy mm. in 2024 everybody's kind of guessing august i'm not yeah. sure why august but mm. at least this year mm. so we still have some time even in the us like this mm. and even after it's approved mm. the actual substance mdma has to 
be uh, declassified so that can actually be used. Like even in the US, we are a mm -hmm. solid year away from mm -hmm. this really being available. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a lot of time for your government officials to take a look at the clinical research and see what the FDA approves so that you folks can then make decisions within your government. Yes, of course, uh, I was thinking that why shouldn't jail pay visit to African countries to have this knowledge shared as clinical trials are undergoing? I would love to visit the entire globe, absolutely. You have to understand that for me right now, I'm speaking from a patient point of view. And yes. I wind up speaking to people who are very much like me, who are hurting, who are in pain, and they want to understand the therapy. But I don't have any sort of legislative power. I don't have any government power. I'm simply telling my story. And the easiest way for me to tell the story is with lovely people like you who are willing to talk with me and share the story and let other people know that this therapy will be available. But yeah, right now I haven't I haven't done a world tour. So maybe in the future, we'll see. Suppose we open organize... my world tour. Yeah, suppose we organize in Africa and you come, you meet our policy makers, uh, the National Drug Authority, you come. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yes, yes, you come and then we, we have a knowledge sharing about the developments as clinical trials are going. You never know, our country may be interested in also uh, sacrificing to take part in clinical trials. Yeah, you're probably going to want someone more important than me to come over because I don't actually have any power in this space. It's just my story and helping people understand what the therapy is. And that's what my YouTube channel is, as my book is. I have a funny feeling you're going to have uh, your government is going to be connecting with some health officials from the U.S. or Australia that will get you much further than a visit from me. But I greatly appreciate the offer. <laughs> so have you ever been in Africa? No. No, I have not yet. Would you love to? Yet. At so, some point. At, at some, some point. point. 2024, should we arrange for your coming? Uh, I don't know. We can maybe talk offline about that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now, um, uh, the issue of mental health. Uh-huh. Uh, many people don't know what it is comprised of. When you talk about mental health, the people simply understand the sick, you know, spiritals, you know, those who are bedridden, the mud, you are throwing stones. How could you enlighten this nation about what it means and that it is everybody's way of life? Okay, so I think your question is, how to explain mental health or mental health issues? I think yes. that's the question. Okay. When I, here's my best advice. When something upsets a person, yeah. the very first thing and easiest thing to do is pay attention to the body. And I always do this because before my treatment, my shoulders were like really stressed. Mm -hmm. What I have learned and what I tell people mm. is that trauma from our childhood, from war, from mm. domestic abuse, from sexual abuse, from just mm. bad things happening, car accidents, things like that. Mm. If we don't have an empathetic witness to help us through those emotions mm. or the trauma was just too much, mm. we actually hold it in our bodies. Mm. And that trauma, when mm. other things happen in our lives that kind of trigger mm. that fear from that trauma or that lack of power from that trauma, mm. our bodies respond. Mm. And that's why people sometimes do really, re they exhibit really odd behavior or odd choices mm. because they're actually working from the trauma. And I keep doing this because mm. a lot of the trauma I had was in my chest and in mm. my shoulders. And so that's how I explain it to people. Mm. That's how our bodies mm. naturally respond to trauma. Mm. We all think it's up here. 
but it's actually all connected between the head and the body. How did I do? Did that make sense? Mm. Okay. Oh, that's great. There is a need for much awareness about this. You need to have some many sensitizations. Uh, I talk of from the African point of view, where few people understand qualitatively this. But if in the near future, we may have chances that we organize uh, knowledge sharing sessions, say in universities where we can gather knowledge institutions, uh, policy makers, everyone, and then you come in physically, we go for such knowledge sharings. How do you see that? You really want me to travel. <laughs> Yes, I want you to travel. The, the God has given you the healing therapy in you. So you should travel nations to reach out to the people. Okay. Um, we, we can talk about that. Remember, yes. this is I this is simply my story. This is I don't have any actual regulatory power in any way, shape, or form. And my story is available. And actually, this might be good. Like my story is available on books and Amazon, but completely no charge for free. The mm. at the journey sage YouTube channel mm. is where I talk about this therapy and you can mm. have different captions. So if folks can get onto YouTube, it's mm. just like I'm right there with them. How's so, that? Does so that the, help book, so the book is in which language? Uh, the book is on Amazon. And so you can order it uh, in whatever languages are available on amazon.com. I made it globally available. So you mean I can order in my local language? I don't know um, every language that's there. All I know is I made it available to any printed language that Amazon supports. So I can go, if you send me exactly which language I should look for, I'm happy after this call to get on Amazon and see if it's available for you. Oh, because for us in Africa, like in Uganda, we have so many languages, over 50 languages. It might be hard, yeah. Yes, there are local yeah. languages that we know we speak almost 90%. Yeah. But I understand on Amazon it is English. I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking, translating. Both, they have over, we can we can talk about that. Um, oh. I, I would be surprised if they have all of the 90 languages in a particular region, but I did make it globally available. So maybe there's a language that's kind of close, maybe. Okay. Same thing with YouTube, with the closed captioning. I'm not exactly sure what languages are available. Okay. So now, Jill, I understand. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, that on our side, we have got an innovation of a mental health and know-how game, a game that rebuilds mental capacities. It is a knowledge building game played by children, parents, and teachers, because in our countries, there is a lot of memory decay, mind stagnancy, unreasonableness, inabilities, even in our learning processes. So the mindsets are uh, like he ruined. Uh, reasoning is a challenge. So we designed a game which is knowledge building, which we can demonstrate. How could do this be uh, no, made known to the entire nation? Because we need a demonstration. For example, if you have a team, you can organize, come to Africa, all a team organized and we come, we have that knowledge sharing, be with the knowledge institutions, experts, policy makers, uh, medical professionals. And then we have a demonstration of that. How could this be made possible? We are far from where you are, we are in Africa. Uh, so I think your question is, so here's, here's what I'm hearing, I'm hearing, a lot of concern for your country, which that I get that. That's mm. one of the reasons why I talked about my stuff, obviously for global. So that's mm. what I'm hearing. And then I'm hearing 
once it is approved in more than one country, because that's only approved in Australia right now. Like mm -hmm. I, this therapy isn't even available in the US yet. I did this therapy underground illegally. Okay. Oh. Mm. So I think what I'm hearing you say is once it's more available, mm. how can we then spread the word? And I will say to you, I will be more than happy once it is, I'm more than happy to jump on another podcast. I'm more mm. than happy to work with anybody in the U S who is actually having outreach to other folks. Mm. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of your researchers, there are researchers across the globe who are mm. actively working on this. There are clinical trials everywhere. So mm. I wouldn't be surprised if there mm. are people in Africa who are already working on this. I just wouldn't know who they are. I'm not actually in the research group. I'm very mm. much just a patient who went mm. through the therapy and telling my story. So mm. I'm going to say... I know you're super excited. I'm super excited. Mm. We are literally you and I talking right now. Mm. We, we're at, we're not even at the starting gate of the race, like the race right here or the race of like the start of when it becomes legal. Mm. We're not even here yet. We're, mm. we're still over here. Mm. So unfortunately we need a little bit more patience. Mm. You and me both in my mm. mind, it should have been approved last year. Mm little bit more patience let it get approved by at least the u.s and then i think a lot of other countries are going to take a lot of notice so i'm sorry i if i could snap my fingers and make it available and ready right now i would i just don't have that kind of power so our prayer is to pray that the process yes uh, you, okay this the process speeds up to heal this nation Exactly. Well, That's exactly what we pray for. I don't know what just happened. The concerned with my officials do their great job, not forgetting the time uh, factor that the nation gets instant healing because everyone is almost sick. It's just looking for that touch to get healed. So that is the prayer we pray because yeah. if it is done, then it will be a walkover to spread it to other nations. To yes, exactly. Mm. So exactly. we pray for that. We pray for that. So how many years have you taken working on for that? How many years have you so far spent working on for that therapy? That healing therapy. How many how many years did it with the therapy? Is the that the duration question? so far, yes. You've taken to reach where you are. Um, I think your question is how long did the therapy take? Yes. The okay. 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 So I was diagnosed with, uh, PTSD from child abuse. Yeah. I started my very first therapeutic psychedelic journey in September. Mm. I had my second journey in December and I had my third journey in June. And so from September to September, it took me a year and three journeys to no longer qualify for a PTSD diagnosis, to no longer be suicidal. Mm -hmm. I want to be completely transparent with you that I was in therapy the whole time. Like every two weeks, I was talking to my therapist and I have continued to do work to deal with additional trauma. The, 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 PTSD diagnosis no longer qualifying was very clearly no longer being suicidal, mm -hmm. no longer thinking that there wasn't a future ahead of me and no longer living with this, this constant fear mm -hmm. that bad things were going to happen. But mm -hmm. I'm also very, very candid with people that that was kind of just the beginning of my journey. I still continue to uncover different traumas and things like that. Did mm -hmm. I answer the question? How did yes. I do? Yes, okay. you answered, Jill. Uh, what duration did we say? 30 minutes? Or... When did we start? Yes. Is it, is it already time? Uh, it is 12.30. So, yeah, we can we can wrap it up. Of course. Uh, you've been on Be Peace Africa podcast, a medium for peace building and golden rule instruction. 
my request is to reschedule for another time so that we can talk at length and you speak to the nation about this entire hearing process that we are praying for that authorities can approve with immediate effect and then the country gets healed. I have a request you for your conclusive remarks now. Uh, I, you know what? I welcome talking to everyone. I think I think you might think I have a little bit more power than I have, but I'm more than happy to talk to people about what this therapy is and what it did for me and, and what it can potentially do for other people. So I thank you for the time today. Well, thank you so much. We are going to meet soon because okay. this has been an orientation and I pray that may the good Lord protect you so much and we see the fruits of your efforts to heal this nation. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope so. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hmm?